Hi, John from FlyAtMikeAlpha.com. Today I'm going to walk you through doing a pre-flight on our Piper Cherokee here. Ann Arbor Tower, right turn northbound, approved runway 24, cleared for takeoff. Rear contact, clock 0164, and that's going to be a First thing we want to check is that we have our required documents on board. That'll be our ARO, or Air Readiness Certificate, Registration, Radio Operator's License, if that's applicable. Here in the United States, we don't need a Radio Operator's License to be a pilot. Our Operating Handbook, or our POH, is our O, and our W is our Weight and Balance. So our Air Readiness Certificate and Registration is right in our back seat there. We don't need a Radio Operator's License. Our Operating Handbook is located right back here, our POH. And our weight and balance is on our back shelf in our binder there. Next thing we want to do is make sure our control wheel is released. So we don't have any control lock in on our control wheel. We can move the controls freely. That's good. Our flaps, we're going to want to make sure are down. So that means handle up to lower our flaps. We can look outside here and see the flaps go up and down. So this is handle up. That's handle down. Flaps up. Flaps down. Handle up. All right. We've got our flaps down our master switch we'll go ahead and turn on and as we turn our master switch on we want to make sure we look out in front of us make sure there's no one else walking near a propeller just in case the engine were to turn over as we uh, turn our master switch on and, and actually supply power to our starting circuit so master switch is on propped in turn that's a good fuel gauges we're going to go ahead and check here we've got about five gallons on the left side and about 10 gallons on the right so we're going to need some fuel before we go flying today Next thing we want to check is our fuel pump. So we're going to look here at our fuel pressure. Look over here on our left for our blue switch. Turn our blue fuel pump switch on. We can hear our fuel pump running. And we can also see that we have some fuel pressure showing right there. We'll go ahead and turn our fuel pump off. We'll go ahead and check our lights now. So we have our rotating beacon turned on. We'll go ahead and turn on our landing light. Turn on our nav lights. We'll just put them to dim. And we'll go ahead and turn on our strobe light. We'll now go ahead and walk outside the airplane, do a quick walk around to make sure all our lights work. Starting with our right wing here, we have our green nav light is working. And we can see the strobe on the belly is flashing. We can see our strobe on the tail, our rotating beacon, is working. And we can see our landing light is working on our nose there and our red navigation light on our left wing is working. Red for port and green for starboard. Now we can go ahead and turn all our lights back off. We'll leave our beacon on, landing light off, navigation lights off, strobe light off, and then our master switch off. Always leave the rotating beacon in the on position. That way it's on as soon as the engine, as soon as you turn your master switch on to start your engine. Also, if you walk away from the airplane and you leave the master switch on, the battery will die. And by leaving the rotating beacon on, you'll have that big flashing red light to let you know, hey, you left the master switch on and you need to go back and turn it off. Now we'll go ahead and complete our walk around. We're going to start with our right wing, checking the flaps, make sure they're secure and not damaged, no dings or dents. We'll also check them from the front side and check our flap actuating rod, the rod that controls the flap movement up and down, make sure that there's a little bit of free play there. It's not too tight or too loose. So we work our way down here. We're looking for dings, dents, rivets popped out, anything like that. We'll work our aileron up and down. Check that box freely. Looking at those hinges there and here. Our hinge pins are in place. All our screws are in place. And we can see back inside the cockpit as we move our ailerons up and down, the controls turn left and right as well. So this is how we control the bank of the aircraft when we're in the air and when we're flying. We'll come around here and we're going to check that our counterbalance weight is attached. We can see it right through this little access hatch here. It looks good. Underside of the aileron looks good. All our nuts and bolts are in place. Don't see anything missing. No dings or dents. We'll come around the side of our wingtip here. Just inspect again. Dings, dents, any missing screws. Everything looks good. We'll work our way along the leading edge. We'll go ahead and confirm our fuel level. We already know it's low, but we would look down inside our tank and confirm our fuel level if we uh, 
didn't think we needed to add any before going flying. We'll come down here. If we had a tie down attached, we would go ahead and remove our tie down chain. We don't. We'll check our fuel vent. There's no mud dauber's nest and it's clear. If it's dripping a little bit of fuel, that's actually probably a good thing. That just means the fuel is venting and the tanks are probably all the way full to the top. It's uh, expanding a little bit with the heat and starting to vent overboard. We'll check our main gear tire here. No flat spots on the tire. We have good tire tread. We have an axle um, cotter pin here. Um, holding our tire on so that's not going to come off on us. We'll work our way inboard here. We'll check our brake assembly. When we check the brake assembly, not only do we look at the ground for any puddles of brake fluid, but we also touch underneath the brake line to make sure there's no brake fluid dripping uh, from there. It'd be red or black 5606 brake fluid. We can check our brake assembly and we're looking that we have good uh, pad uh, material left, that the pads aren't too worn down. The rotor's got a good amount of material left to it, and there's no obvious signs of cracks or leaky brake fluid or uh, anything that might be wrong with our brakes. We'll go ahead and look just above our main gear tire here, and we'll notice this little valve here. If we push up on it, we'll be able to drain a little bit of fuel, and we'll hold our little test tube against something white so that we can see that we have good blue fuel. There's no water in it, no separation. If we did have any water in our fuel, this is what it would look like. It would separate, so you would have blue fuel on the top and clear water on the bottom, and you can really see that separation there, right in the middle of the tube. Now, if it's very good, clean fuel, you could consider pouring it back into your tank, but, and of course, if there's contaminated fuel, you wanna just pour it into a uh, receptacle somewhere. I always pour it into a receptacle. You don't wanna pour it on the ground, and you really don't wanna pour it back in your tank, just in case you happen to have a little bit of water or dirt in uh, your fuel that you sumped out of the tank. Pour it into a gas can somewhere and uh, or in a designated receptacle somewhere on the ramp area. As we work our way up to our nose here, we're going to want to go ahead and look inside our engine compartment, make sure that all our wires are intact, nothing's frayed or broken, everything looks right. We'll go ahead and look inside here, no obvious signs of oil leaking or dripping, nothing that looks really uh, awry inside here, no obvious signs of cracks or wires hanging loose, anything like that. We'll also want to go ahead and check our oil level. Spin that back. Great to grab a paper towel, wipe it off, and put it back in. We can just look here and see that we've got right about six quarts of oil. And six quarts is great in this airplane. Make sure you check your POH to see what level your airplane needs to be at. Oftentimes, airplanes don't like to be filled all the way full. They'll usually just spit out the extra oil out into the belly through the overflow tube down inside the cowling there. So I'm um, keeping them at a recommended level. Just ask your flight instructor, and they'll be able to tell you exactly what level to keep it at. So we work our way forward here. We're going to go ahead and check the leading edge of our propeller for any nicks or scratches. There may be some wear signs where some dirt and uh, sand is worn through the paint, but as long as there's no major nicks or cuts or uh, cracks forming, then we're not really too worried about it. We'll also go ahead and check this leading edge of our propeller. All looks good. No major nicks, dings, or dents there. We'll look inside of our engine compartment. Look at our oil cooler here. Look inside there. Make sure there's no nests or any animals living inside there. We'll go ahead and check our alternator belt on this side. We have the alternator belt that will charge our battery for us. We have our air filter inside here. We want to make sure there's no obstructions, no leaves or dirt, debris, any uh, just any bird's nest forming, anything that would be inside of uh, the air intake or blocking the uh, airflow to the engine. We'll observe our nose strut here and Looks like a pretty good level there, about four inches showing. Check our exhaust, that there's no uh, cracks forming on the tip of our exhaust. And our nose wheel looks good. Uh, oftentimes, airplane tires may look a little bit low, but as long as they're at the appropriate values, inflated to what they are supposed to be at, then they're all good. So this might look a little low, but that's actually right where it needs to be. And we don't see any uh, signs of uh, flat spots or uh, cracks in the rubber tire. Everything looks good there. Last thing we'll check is our spinner. Make sure we have all our screws in place, that it's round and smooth so it's not going to vibrate or shake on us and that it's firmly attached. As we work our way around this side, we have the cabin air intake. So this is what's actually gonna keep the cabin cool with outside air blowing right at your feet there. Here we have outside air blowing in that'll blow right 
um, directly up at you in your face if you turn your air vent up and you have this little storm window that you can open up for some extra airflow as well. This is your outside air temperature probe in case you're wondering what that is. As we come along this side, we're looking for any dents or dings to the leading edge of our wing, observing this gear strut tire and brakes. So again, we have a cotter pin in place, our axle nuts holding our wheel in place, no flat spots on the tire, good tread remaining. Tire pressure looks good. We're gonna touch it underneath here. Make sure we don't get any brake fluid on our hands. The uh, brake pads look like they have good amount of uh, material remaining on both sides. Rotor looks good. Good amount of strut showing there, so it's not uh, low on nitrogen or over full. We'll go ahead and sump a little bit of fuel out of this tank. And we can see a little bit of remaining water from when we uh, added water before, just to check that. But fuel looks good to me. We'll hold it up against something white so we can see blue fuel. We'll go ahead and dump this in our receptacle. So our last fuel sump we want to get here is right here at the gas escalator. That's right below the engine cowling. This is the most likely spot you're going to get water in your fuel. It's the lowest part of the fuel system. And we can see there, we'll hold it against something white. We've got nice blue fuel, looks good and clear to us. We'll go ahead and dump this in our fuel receptacle, not back in the tank. And as we work our way out on our left wing, there's a few extra things to look at. Again, we have our fuel vent. If it's dripping a little bit of fuel, that's probably a good thing that's venting, but we wanna make sure there's no mud dauber's nest or anything uh, living up inside there. Work our way out here. If we had a chain on here, we'd undo our chain at this point. And coming out here, you can see something different. We have a pedal vein, not a pedal tube, but a pedal vein on this airplane. And uh, the pedal vein is basically your airspeed indicator. So you have the air coming in, the ram air pressure, the drain hole in case you get rainwater and things in there that can drain right out. And on the very back side of this pedal vein is where your static port is located. That little tiny hole right there is your static port. So you don't want to touch that with your bare hands, don't want to get any dirt or grease inside there. You want to make sure it's totally clear. And we'll come back to the leading edge of the wing. And right here, we've got another fancy little device. That is a stall sensor, basically an angle of attack sensor. Imagine if you're flying along, the wind is hitting the wing, going smoothly over the top and bottom and holding this down. And if you were to raise the wing too much and the air were to start to hit from the bottom, it would push that up and you would have a little red light go off in the cockpit. And it's very common to see that little red light go off during uh, takeoff and landing since you're near uh, stall speed and approaching a stall. Uh, nothing to worry about. But that is how our stall sensor works, just by airflow coming from below the wing and the wing getting near its critical angle of attack. It's going to warn you by flashing that little red light in the cockpit. Again, we'll go ahead and check our fuel level on this wing. And the other things we're looking for, besides uh, just all the items on the checklist, is the overall health of the airplane. Dings, dents, um, no major corrosion. All the rivets are in place, nothing's popped out, all our screws are in place. We're not missing any major parts. Coming along this side, we're looking at our nav light, all looks good, our wingtip looks good. We'll go ahead and put our aileron up here so we can check our weight is firmly attached, our counterbalance weight looks good. Underside of the aileron looks good, all our nuts and bolts are in place, nothing's coming loose, no dents or dings. Come on up here, look at the top, look at our hinges. All our screws and hinge pins in place. All looks good. This flap's a little bit loose. That's exactly what it's supposed to be. A little bit loose, not too much, not bound up. And our actuating rod is a little bit loose there, has a little bit of free play. That's perfect. As we work our way back here along the fuselage, we're looking for any dents or dings, any rivets popped out of place, anywhere a fuel truck might have backed into the airplane. All our antennas are attached, nothing's been knocked off. All our communications antennas, our GPS antenna, that little white dome up there, our ELT antenna, that little black one there. We have some antennas on the belly here. We have an old ADF antenna that we don't use anymore. We have a transponder antenna, that's the one that looks like the shark fin there. As we work our way back here, again, looking for all our screws are in place, no dents or dings. We'll go ahead and look at our stabilator. Uh, this is not an elevator or a stabilizer, it's a stabilator, it's a combination elevator and stabilizer. All our screws are in place, we don't want to grab on the trim tab where it says no push there. We're just going to go ahead and grab on the corner here and then uh, move it up and down, stop to stop, make sure that moves freely. Coming along here, we're looking at all our hinges, making sure all those look good. 
and looking at our rudder we're not going to push or pull on it we're just going to um, look that all the attachment points are in there and that nothing's come loose all our nuts and bolts are firm up inside there and tight working our way this way again don't grab onto your trim tab just simply grab on the tip of the elevator move it up and down back and forth as we move this back and forth we can look inside the cockpit and notice that the controls are actually moving in and out so this is controlling the pitch of the aircraft also the airspeed so pitch is really what controls your airspeed and power is what's going to control your altitude everyone thinks this makes the airplane go up or down it really just makes the pitch go up or down and then pitch nose up or nose down controls your airspeed working along here all our rivets are in place no dents or dings all our screws are in place, antennas are attached, everything looks good. And we are right back to where we started at. We'll go ahead and review our checklist at this point, make sure we didn't miss anything. Go item by item, say it out loud, make sure that you've done each and every single thing, and you are all ready to hop in and go complete your engine start checklist and go flying. Hi guys, thanks for doing that pre-flight with us, and we've got a challenge for you. There is one missing screw on the airplane. If you can be the first viewer to find where that missing screw is, leave it in the comments below and we will send you a free flyatmikealpha.com t-shirt, no charge, shipped right to you. Also, don't forget to check out some of these other helpful videos of how to uh, do your startup engine checklist and shutdown checklist, very methodically work through both of those. Check out some of our other videos on our channel. Don't forget to subscribe and also check us out on Patreon. We greatly appreciate all the support you guys give us and any support you can uh, manage. We really appreciate makes our dream of having this free online ground school a reality. Thank you so much. Remember, fly every day. And if you can't fly every day, then fly at MikeAlpha.com. See you all later. Detroit on 1895. Great, thank you. Have a good one.